born in Mayville, a little town in central California. Here's where I went to high school until I was 15. My little sister, Jill, was a senior there. It was just a few weeks to graduation. I thought she was an average, normal girl, as good in her studies as the next kid. No better, no worse. I couldn't have been more wrong about Jill. I had no idea how confused and full of hatred she was. I didn't know then how the teachers, father and I, had missed giving her the love, attention and understanding that she, like every other child, wanted and needed so badly. Is it Schiller? <laughs> This is where I worked. And on my afternoons off, the bright spot was finding Jill waiting for me. Hi, sis. Well, let's go back in and have a soda. Oh. Oh, I'm so sick of that place. I don't want to see it anymore until tomorrow. How was school? Oh, same as always. Did you finally get that Shakespeare read this morning after breakfast? Sure. How did your teacher like it? Take us to a movie, huh, Kim? Oh, can't, honey. You know, Pop hasn't brought home a dime in weeks. And we can't afford it. Come on, let's go home. Oh, you'll stop picking on me again. He's always picking on me. Well, um, maybe he won't be home. Come on. to say for yourself? About what? Suppose you don't know that your principal called me. You've been making lousy marks. And if you don't bring them up in the next six weeks, you ain't gonna graduate. That's so what? Oh, Jill. Oh, don't take it so big, sis. Everybody's got it in for me. I just can't win. Who's got it in for you? Oh, all them lousy school wardens. Jill, I want you to graduate. You've got to get an education. You don't want to end up like me, do you? I promise you, I won't. Well, I'll tell you one thing, kid. If you don't make it, don't come running to me sniveling for sympathy. No, oh, who needs you? And I'll tell you something else. If you don't go to school, I ain't gonna let you sit around here on your duff playing phonograph records while Kim and me support you. Why don't you get off your duff? Then Kim wouldn't have to sling hash six days a week and then come home and cook for us, too. You can't even buy your own beer. You. Yeah. Come on. And you're gonna go to work at whatever job you can get that requires no education, no training, and no brains. Like you, huh? any longer. It's for the birds. I've had it. Pop? 
What's the trouble? I found this on the floor. Oh. Oh, that no boy. This is no time to get angry, Pop. It's a serious... She'll be back. All kids run away from home. What if she means it? Good riddance, Sam. Pop, she's your child and my little sister. Listen, I'm glad she's gone. I've been getting a little fed up with her. Fed up with her? Your own flesh and blood? I've been fed up with her ever since your mother blew out of here with that salesman. They're an awful lot alike, you know, Jill and your mother. Never would listen to anything I ever said to them. I'm going to the police. You do what you want to, Kim. You're a good kid. I don't know what you're knocking yourself out for with this. Now there's only the two of us. What do you need her for? Don't say anything like that. Here, see what you can find for work today. And get yourself down to the employment office. You haven't checked in there for two weeks. Yeah, well, they ain't got anything but jobs for slobs. Besides, I haven't any bus fare. Well, here's your bus. Twenty dollars. It's gone. She took it, the little louse. Our only twenty bucks. You see? Good riddance. <laughs> A room. Sure, three bucks in advance. Well, that's the Joker, Chum. I'm fresh out of money. What do you want from me? Charity? But I'm tired and I've got no place to go. So I'm bleeding. Oh, please, mister. It's just for one night. The mission for Mrs. is two blocks down the street. Blow, kid. But I'm uh, good at cooking and cleaning. Did you ever work before? Sure. Let me see your social security card. Oh, I left it at home. Oh, sure, I get it. Well, I'm a guy who believes that everybody should have a chance. One chance only. You clean up my room and we'll talk business. You just bought yourself a deal. What's your name, honey? Taking a gallop pole or something? My name's Sam. Why don't you leave that go to later? Now, Sam, take it easy. Sure, take it slow and easy. <laughs> now, Sam, go on me. Need any help, Sam? Now, who asked for you? Come on. Sam giving you a rough time? He didn't say anything about privileges being part of the deal. Our host drives a hard bargain. Dame. Come on, Myra. Want a cigarette? Thanks. How come you hit a flea bag like this? Oh, broke. Run away? No, I lost my job. And you don't have to fake to me. What's your name? Jill. Mine's Mary. How long have you been on the loose? Oh, a couple of days. Want to go home? I've got nothing to go home to. Same as me. You scared? Not with you. You want to spend the night with me? Oh, that'd be great. 
if I didn't crowd you? I've been crowded all my life. What's another night? You're nice. You worry about people when they're in a the sweat. Hey, Mary! Yes, Sam? You keep that bottom in the night, it'll cost you three bucks extra! Drop dead, Sam. I've worked them all, up and down the coast. Believe me, it ain't hard. Yeah, but what am I supposed to do? Mary was going to tell me, but the minute we got here, she saw him and started right in. I got him warmed up before he came. Got him started on highball. Now he's belting him down straight. Mary can't drink him under. She'll turn him over to you. Yeah, but I'm no good at drinking. You don't think we drink the real booze for crime and anything? It's tea. This knows his business. This drip, he must have an emergency tea. He's a pattern cutter from Seattle on a three-week vacation driving down the Ensenada. He's got about 200 in cash, the rest in traveler's checks. His name's Josh. Go ahead. Yeah, but what do I do? You're getting to pay the bill. Stupid, use your imagination. It's fine to see what you're doing. You mean, uh, let my conscience be my guide, huh? Get it, though. We'll take care of that. Doing, Josh. Hi, you baby. Feeling no pain, huh? No, sir. No pain at all. Are you just going to sit here drinking alone? Oh, it isn't being very s s social, is it? Uh, Gus, do it again, eh, Gus? Only triple it, eh? to be monotonous all that's happened to order drinks, huh, baby? You know something we're dummies. Speak for yourself, kid. We walk up the cell. We get him ready to sign on the dotted line. And then what do we do? We send in an amateur, the second team, the thumb suckers. I'm not going to let that baby spoil mine. Relax, Mona. Kids got to learn sometime. The bill, Josh. Oh, yeah. Here, let me help. yelling for his money? Yeah, but, but Gus, what does he tell the cops? Gus ain't never seen us before. Molesting my girls, eh? What do you think this is, a cheap pickup joint? Huh? Come on, oh. get out of here! Oh, Gus, I like you. No, I don't want you. I like this place, Gus. Come on. Oh, Gus. Boy, we're going places, us three. I've been places. Mona's from Chicago. Yeah. Worked my way west, seeing the world. Hacking first class every step of the way. 
I had a penthouse in Omaha. Penthouse? Oh, Mary, let's move out of this weenie and get ourselves squared away. Honey, you got a car before you can fly. She'll do all right. And bet your crumbling cookies I will. Some clothes burst and, and a gorgeous apartment. And then a car with so much hardware on it, it'll only go three miles to the gallon. <laughs> well, what's for laughs? Honey, the only trouble with our business is you can't stand still very long. That's why I live in a rabbit patch like this. You gotta keep yourself fluid so you can flow easy and fast. Yeah, but I like it here in Frisco. You'll like L.A. better. More money there, kid. Better work on a dance hall. That's a big deal down there, serviceman. You know what I average at the Broadway Emporium in L.A.? We're in 200 a week. Gee, that's 10,000 hunks of bread a year. No, you never get to work a full year. I mean, no human body could take it a full year. That dancing bit is for eagles. That's why I left home. My stepfather always wanted to dance with me. The pig. Do I have to split with anyone else? Depends on where you work and how big a hog you are. Well, I, I think I'm going to try it on my own tomorrow night. She did, then continued on her own. But when the police traced her to Gus's bar and grill, Mary said she'd left for richer fields. That's all. But every city west of the Mississippi will have a full description of her. They'll find her eventually. Goodbye. Thank you, Sergeant. See ya. I'm going to San Francisco. What? Oh, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. I've got to. I've just got to. Well, I thought you were the dependable and steady type like me. The only thing you're dependable about is yourself. Well, you aren't thinking about quitting your job. I sure am. Well, wait a minute. I want another cup. Huh? I'll go to San Francisco and start with that bar and grill. And I'll find out what she's been yeah. doing. What'll you find out? That your sister's been making passes at men? You would say that, wouldn't you? When you don't even know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I've been around. I know her type, hanging around at bars and places. Well, you should know, sitting around bars all day and all night. What do you want me to do? Sit around in this dump? You know, my kind of work isn't always available. Sure, sure. Who wants to hire a 45-year-old football player? I was the best fullback in this area. Oh, that's when you were in high school. I played some pro ball, and your mother came to every game, too. San Berdu, Sacramento, Fresno, all over the whole state, and everything first class. She loved it. No, you showed me your clippings before I could read. Well, isn't it all right for kids to know their father amounts to something? It's wonderful. But when kids grow up, they want their father to grow up, too. Well, things would have been different if your mother hadn't done what she did to me. You forced her to it, Pop. I forced her to leave me with two kids, one 15 and one 9. Are you crazy or something? Why, only a tramp, a heartless tramp, would do what she did to me. I thought you were talking about what she did to us kids. Well, that's, that's what I meant. You meant what you said, Pop. Making me work in... You always do. Oh, now, take it easy, kid. I'm still your father. Making me work in that joint since I was 15, being pawed and mauled and groped by a bunch of slimes when I should have been in school. Is that acting like a father? Maybe if you'd gotten married, you wouldn't be so bitter all the time. Me? Married? Why not? Every girl does if there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing wrong with me but you. And I suppose you think it's normal being afraid of men as you are. I hate men. Are you still harping on that? That happened years ago. Something I'll never forget as long as I live. A friend of yours. I was 15. That's all I'm going to take off of you, you little brat. Go to Frisco. That's where you belong, crawling in the mud right next to your sister. And I should have left when she did. Well, what are you waiting for? Leave now. You're a tramp like Jill, like your mother, like the rest of them. And I'm going to leave just like they did. I'm sick of talking to you. 
When I get back, see that you're gone. Big sky like this? Sure. Okay. Well, you handle this thing like a baby buggy. Big sky like this gives a guy confidence. Oh, it's more than that. You know, you've got know-how. I bet your arms could pack a punch like missiles. Maybe he's a husky in Jersey, honey. How far do you wheel this heap? Ooh, all the way down 99 to Bakersfield, then cut over on 466 to Barstow, then 66 to Needles, down 95 to Blythe, up 60 to L.A., and then 101 to Frisco. Any of those ports of call interest you? Well, my target's Vegas. Vegas. You can lose a lot of money in Vegas. Well, you can make a lot, too, if you play your cards right. Well, what's your game? Craps? Roulette? 21? Entertainment. A showgirl? Well, something like that. Yeah, but you're kind of young to be a showgirl. How old are you? Legal age. What do you want to do, bed bug get squashed? Boy, that was close. Yeah, the sports cars. You know, that's the only dangerous thing about stoking an oil burner this size. I just didn't see him. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you ought to rest a little bit. No, I... Yeah, maybe you're right. Rest might be just what I need to quiet my jittery nerves. Relax. You live longer. You know, here's where it gets you, right back here in the shoulders. closest to Las Vegas that Jerry came, he suggested she work for his friend Red at the Paradise for a while, until she got enough money to reach Las Vegas in the style she wanted to accustom herself to. And when I finally found Mary at Sam's Hotel in San Francisco, she told me she heard Jill was working at the Paradise near Barstow. I'd spent the little money I had, so...
trouble, ma'am? Boyfriend was kind of in a hurry. Stay away from me. Just let me go. And where would you be off to in the middle of nowhere? I'll... I'll hit a ride. With another gentleman? Maybe she prefers gentlemen to floaters? No, I didn't mean that. So of course you didn't, ma'am. Why don't you just calm down? We've got a nice little fire going and coffee's brewing. There. You can just about see it through the bushes. Come on. Good to be trusting yourself to hitching rides. Now you get yourself a good night's rest. It's the best cup of coffee I've ever had. Anybody can make coffee. Nobody in our restaurant ever could. Nobody's been making it as long as Jake has. these parts. Thank you. All of you. ever going to make Barstow. She can make it the way she came this far. That's definitely out. I'm all in favor of a bus. They toss you off a bus. You ain't got no dough. I know that. I've been on a bus. Yet you're in favor of a bus, Jake? I aim to raise a little kitty for this. And I aim to start the contribution with this. Could be that's your last dollar. Could be, you're right. Now, who's going to be first to join this little crusade? Now, don't tell me you've sunk so low there ain't a, a bit of chivalry left in, in a lot of you. Jeff, you know I only got six bits. That's six bits more than what she's got, and she's a lady. Mr. Ainsley, what can we count on you for, sir? I was saving it for a less noble cause. Thanks, baby. Got it figured out yet? Oh, I can't understand it. I had it all figured in Vegas. Else, how could I have won two grand? But I can't figure it out now. What do you care? You got the two grand. Stop beating your brains out and enjoy it. Okay, now that's the kind of philosophy that I enjoy here. Uh, what are you doing later, baby? Huh? What are you doing later? Let's do it together. Huh? Uh, when do you get off? When do you want me to get off? Well, I got nothing to do till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in Santa Barbara. Well, that's a long time from now. Ah, uh, with a fascinating guy like me, time passes very quickly. I just bet it does.
Can you cover for me with bread? Thank you. Oh, Vi, I only asked you to do it twice this week. It gets me home so late. My baby doesn't get her bottle. Listen, if this deal works out the way I figured, I'll hire a nurse for that kid of yours. It has some kind of a system. It just worked at Vegas. Two grand's worth. And he drives the wildest convertible you ever saw. Loaded, huh? Vi, it's my big chance to score. It's what I came here for. You're sure hungry for money, you poor thing. Oh, don't start lecturing me again. Just trying to keep you out of trouble. Only turkey necks get into trouble. Okay, okay. I'll tell Red you got sick. But be careful, will you, kid? Where are the keys to your car, Noxie? Huh? What for? Don't you think I'm going to let you drive in the condition you're in? Oh, that's right, that's right. If you drink, don't drive. And if you drive, don't drink. Here, Noxie, you take care of this. I'll take care of everything else. Yeah. Sure. Is she working tonight? She was, but she had to leave earlier with a f with a friend. Oh. Uh, will she be back? If we don't close before then. Have you any idea where she's staying? No, I really don't, dear. But she'll be sure to show up tomorrow night when we're open. Bye. Come here. Just a minute, honey. Hey, honey. You're really beat. Come on, honey. Take a swallow. It'll make you feel better. It's just that I've been chasing around the country, looking all over for her, and to finally find her and not find her. She's my baby sister. Oh. Well, I'd be careful how I use the word baby. She's a lot more grown up than you, seems like. Thanks. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. Find a place to sleep, I guess. Got any money? I'm okay. Tell you what, you spend the night with me. We'll sleep late, you can help me with the baby, and it'll be time to come back here again. Okay? Thanks. Bye, I called you. Coming, honey. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Knox, Santa Barbara, eight bucks. Cabin 104.
home. Want to feed her? Yeah. She's such a doll. She's like a horse. It's your steak sandwich, honey. She's all I live for. I can see why. Mothers are such pushovers. And you can have one like that? Yeah, but what you have to go through to get one? I'd give anything in the world to have one just like that. A good idea would be to get a husband first. You... I got pregnant. He got drafted. He's somewhere in Germany. I'm here in Barstow. Wonder what I'm going to tell her when she finds out she doesn't have a daddy to kick her around. That's pretty rough, I... I don't know. Maybe I worry too much. Why get high blood pressure about something that's three, four, maybe five years away? You know... A guided missile might knock us all off before then. So why worry about something that doesn't exist yet? <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. Sure, Kim. Sure. She's going to sleep. She's had it. I have, too. <clears throat> I'm for some pillow pounding. That one's ready to go at 7 a.m. Oh, sleep as long as you want. I'll take care of everything. Four pieces I'll bring, including a tank full of vessel. Well, if I'm going to get your gas and oil business, that's a different story. Now, this isn't the place either. This is the last place, mister. We've had it. Uh, wait a minute, her. She was here last night. She the one? Where is she? Where's who? That kid that waited on me last night. What's the beef? Well, according to Mr. Knox, she took him for 2,000 cash, 
A gold wristwatch, a gold tie clip, and a pair of gold cufflinks. Yeah, and my convertible. We can't help you much, fellas. Well, why do you employ thieves? I don't hire thieves. The kids breeze in here and beg for a job. I don't know who they are or where they came from or where they're going. All I require is that they do their job. That's a fine way to run a railroad. What was her name? Jill. Jill what? I don't know. You know her social security number? Uh, I don't have that information handy. I keep my records at home. Well, I'll teletype your description over to all points. If she's still in your car, we'll get her. What the devil is this country coming to? Gee, Kim, it's a pretty rough deal. Bye, customers. Okay. <laughs> well, it be, fellas. A couple of beers, huh? Three bourbons and soda. Jackie, are you sure you've done this before? Oh, with the breeze. Okay. You give us the eye, then we move in. And then you start yapping about them trying to pick up your girl. Then I get them outside and we clobber them. Then I clean them out and we spit three ways. Do you read it? All right. I haven't seen you around here before. Maybe it's because I've never been here before. Hey, kid, got a sister like you at home? If I did, I wouldn't tell her about you. Yeah, you were talking to me, remember? You're awful cute, Daddy-o. Yeah, come on, let you and me dance a little bit, huh? Hey, what are you trying to do? Hey, leave us alone, will you, boys? I'm trying to pick up our girl. You heard what he said. Hello, buddy. Is he trying to proposition you or not? I right, said, so go away. Far away. If you want to throw some muscle around, come on outside. Here you have money. I don't have it. Just give it to me, I'll take it from you. Here. Jackie, it's yours. Kim, 
Kim Stanley, Kim Hunter, or Kim Novak. I'm the new Kim. Nobody's discovered me yet. They almost did. Just now. Do you do this often? Beats working. I'm doing pretty good at it so far. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's stay here. This is a good place to hide. You're with it, kid. You're smart. That's smart enough. Jackie, do you make a practice of only taking cash? You get a hunk of bread and it's all yours. You grab ice and you gotta split with a fence. Well, I've got some ice I wanna unload. Who do I go to see around here? Tom? Well, I don't know any Tommy. Tom's in the garage, down 66. It's about five miles, you can't miss it. That's the all clear. Hey, you still here? Kim? <gasps> By the way, what happened? Nothing much. The cops took the drunks in for disturbing the peace. <laughs> That's a gasser. You're in the clear. Where's my fellas? Waiting for you down the road. Come on, let's blast off. Joe's friend's out front. The guy from Santa Barbara? The truck driver. He's waiting for her. Hey, what is this? A meeting of the Tuesday morning club? Come on, let's rattle. Jackie, you go ahead. I'm going to stay here. Okay. Thanks. Vi, I'd like to talk to him. Come on, I'll take you out front. Something? Trust your old Uncle Jerry. Come on, spill it. Why are you being so nice to me? Taking me to Thompson's. Maybe it's because I like company when I drive. Especially girl company like your sisters. How well do you know Jill? She's a nice kid. <laughs> Was. You cold? I'm hot. Here. Take this. Come on, put it on. There's Thompson. All right, let me handle this. Inside. I got a proposition to make. Watch a gold tie pin and a pair of gold cufflinks. Are you yours? Where'd she go from here? I don't know, Fred. I'm not a real man. Oh, where'd she go from here, Tommy? Uh, you're breaking my arm. Where'd she go? All right. Let go of my arm. I'll give you the stuff. I don't want the stuff. I want her. I don't know. All, all right, all right. I'll tell you. Let go of my arm. She said she wanted to call her own shots. I told her to contact Sue Hawkins. Sue Hawkins where? In L.A., uh, antique shop. Fix us some coffee, huh, Kim? From the thermos? Getting a charge out of this? Being on a loose like Jill. I'm scared most of the time. You sure aren't scared of me, are you, kid? I don't know. 
should I be? Thank you. It's good coffee. Well, the best coffee I ever had from hobos made. Hey, you have been around a little, haven't you? For a girl who's never been out of Mayville until she was 22, I'd say I have been around a little bit. What did Tommy mean about Jill? She wanted to call the shots. Well, I guess she wanted to be important. Not take any guff from anybody. And one thing I'll say for her, she knows what she wants. How about you, Kim? You know what you want? I want to find Jill. Is that all you want? I don't know what you mean. Uh, I mean, don't you want to meet a guy who will fall for you? Maybe you for him? Maybe you get along fine together. Fine enough to want to get married someday and have some kids for your trouble. Never thought about it. You never thought about it? You know, sometimes I catch myself not thinking about it. Sixty miles since I started. No wonder. Maybe you need a little rest. Maybe you're right. The rest might be just what I need to calm my jittery nerves, huh? like this, or is it me? No, it's not you. What is it, then? I can't tell you, and I, I don't want to talk about it. I'll never do it again, Kim, honest. But I didn't mean to make you cry, Kim. It's just that you're so good-looking. And we thought we were getting along fine. I thought you'd let me help find Jill with you. Now, I guess I blew the whole thing. I'm sorry. Stop it. It's not you. It's me. doing fine. Well, how can I be of any help to you? Well, I want to go places. And from what Tommy said, I figured you could steer me. Do you have any specialties? You know, things you like to do. Well, I like money, but who doesn't? But I know how to get it. How old are you? Oh, you know age has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's experience and know-how. Well, Tommy wouldn't have sent you a banana. Go 
Hi, Sue. How's it going, Arvin? Trying to fill a big order from Kansas City. Got plenty of food blenders, electric can openers, heaters. Somebody wants a special on toasters. We can't lift enough of them. We're starting our Christmas rush. New? No. Hmm? Want me to put her on? I'm sending her out to Rick. Tell her how to get there while I call him. And don't come through the shop. Go around the block to get your car. I already had that mapped out. You know your way around L.A.? Oh, just give me the address. I'll find my way. Look, Rick, I've been working on this thing a whole week. He's not going to waste that much of my time unless he thinks there are going to be dividends. And he appointed you to collect them. All right, Frank. Give me the details. Well, there's the whole survey. Worked out for you step by step. Now, you've got four weeks to prepare. Sorry to interrupt, sir. A Miss Jill Winters is here. Uh, that's a candidate from Sue. Uh, tell her to come back in about a half an hour. Well, that's not necessary. You know everything, and besides, if I hurry, I can play nine holes before dark. Philip, show Mr. Castellani out through the back door. This way, sir. So long, kid. Give me progress reports, eh? Okay. Miss Winters, come in. Layout. Uh, but it does have a nice view. Boy, you got the whole world in front of you. And you can even see the ocean uh, when there's no smog. Yeah, that smog's really something, isn't it? Oh? Does it bother you? I don't know. I haven't been here long enough. Do you uh, live here alone? Just me and my house, boy. And would you care for a drink, Miss Winters? Ginger ale. The people I like usually call me Jill. Philip, won't you make yourself comfortable, Jill? I'd like to. And what I like to do, I usually do. Two ginger ales, please. Right away, sir. Cigarette? Sue has said some very flattering things about you. I know. I was there when she called. She's got a good eye for alert personnel. I wasn't undersold, believe me. I can deliver anything she promised. Well, you've got a great deal of confidence for such a young girl. Confidence only pays off when it's backed up by performance. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Well, here's to crime. Excuse me. Yes? Hello, darling. I'm so glad you got my call. How was the game? 626162. Six, two. Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry about the opera tonight. I just simply cannot make it. I'm tied up. Big business affair. Yes, the tickets are at the box office. Now, why don't you take along one of your bows, huh? Well, that's very flattering. Uh, check with me tomorrow. Bye. I'm sorry to take so long. You're quite a bow yourself. She's a wonderful girl. You got pretty lips, too. Thank you. Now, shall we continue with the interview? Oh, it's such a nice afternoon. It seems a shame to waste it talking. Don't misunderstand me, Jill. My morality right now is not prompted by conviction. It's dictated out of necessity. You see, in my business, you can only make a mistake once. They just don't give you a second chance. I'm no mistake. Mm -hmm. Sue told me you were ambitious. Or is what you're really looking for a free meal ticket? What's the matter with having both? If you're serious about working with your brains, fine. If you've got something else in your mind, 
I've got no time for that department. At least, not for the next four weeks. Okay, Dad. What you want, I want. From here on in, I only work from the neck up. I remember that. I won't forget it. How could I? You wouldn't let me. <laughs> Sue. Hello, Rick. Hello, baby. <laughs> hey, where are the kids? They'll be along. Philip, I'm expecting Mr. Sanders and a friend. Very well, sir. Brother, my beat. How about a drink for the old girl? Sure, help yourself. Oh, what a job to get all those toasters wrapped. First, we miscalculated and ran out of cartons. You know, they're not all the same size. We had to send the kids out to rustle up some more. And then the trucker wanted cash on the line before he'd accept them for Kansas City. Well, why didn't you tell me about it? I could have taken care of it. I thought you were busy enough. How's the situation developing? All right? Well, there are problems, but I think we've overcome them. Hi. Well, hello, Artie. You all know my ballast, don't you? Judy Brown? Everybody? Hello, Judy. Make yourself at home. Well, you got the burglar alarm. It was rough, but uh, we made it. Well, what was so difficult about it? Looks like any of them. Uh, this is the newest. It's got a sealed in front. What hasn't? Oh, I see you've opened this up. Hey, that's great. Oh, this is a good one. If the current goes off, these dry cells act as an auxiliary. Shall I connect it? Yeah, go ahead. You know how to hook it up? We scientists are the future of the world. Okay, hook it up, Artie. I connected this plug so it'll be easier to experiment with. Well, that is sensitive. Anything that touches it and off she goes. Well, I've got the auxiliary disconnected so we can play around with it. Now, let's see. The back is connected to the wall, so we can't get in through that way. That front plate is welded on. The only other entrance is through the vents. The problem is, how are we going to silence this little monster? Why don't you cut the wires going into it? The lack of juice means nothing to this system. The auxiliary battery takes over. Besides, the wires are buried in concrete. Now, just so you all understand how this gadget operates, as somebody presses on the alarm button, the magnet in this circuit is activated, pulling down this lip and closing the circuit. The hammer gong vibrates against the bell, and every cop in the whole world starts moving. On us. Unless this little gimmick is silenced, we can't even start planning the detail. Listen, why don't we shoot a fizz bottle into it? You know, aim it at the box, flood the thing, and put it out of commission. Are you kidding? What is a conductor? Well, it's a good idea to shoot something in there, isn't it? Yeah, if it's a non-conductor. And if you don't touch this box while you're doing it... Give me the keys to your shop. What for? Well, there's something in there I think we need. Don't worry about a thing until I get back. Jerry had let me off at L.A. at Sue Hawkins' antique shop and went on his route. I would see him the next time he came through. So I'd been waiting for hours, hoping to catch a glimpse of Jill. But it began to look as if I'd been given a bum steer. to talk about. But Jill was busy and dropped me off at her new apartment and she went on somewhere to be back whenever she could get back. 
Remember that plane that was circling the field for two hours with the stuck landing gear? Yeah, what about it? Well, they had the crash trucks flood the runway with foam. What was that used for? So no sparks from the engines would touch off the fuel. And foam is a non-conductor, isn't it? I'd say so. What about this? Isn't this the same foam they used? Honey, if you only drank, I'd bust out a bottle of champagne. Well, before you lose your head, we better dry run it first. Hook it up, Artie. Since you've been gone, I hooked up an alarm button to it. Now, you better test it. What about the noise? Well, I've muffled the bell. Go ahead, Artie. All right, try your phone. Have you touched it? I told you it was sensitive. All right, go ahead. Try it now, Artie. Sometime during the day of December 18th, a packet containing 970 carats of Melly will arrive at the Valley Post Office substation. What are Mellies? Full cut, single cut, small diamonds. Worth $150 a carat. Wow. About $150,000 worth of wow. You mean they send it through the mail? They, they don't send it by special messenger? That's right. For many years, the jewelers all over the world have been using the registered mail. It's proven the safest form of shipment. Now, here's the plans. And here's what we have to do. This isn't your kind of life, Jill, and you know it. I don't know it at all. Besides, I'm very good at it. Somebody. And I love it. Well, the brains you're using on that, you could use on an education. No, oh, school is for eggheads. But I'll work. See you through college. All through college. Do you think I could afford all this? afford that and live like I do and drive a car and go to school and what you'd make? Well, it's wrong what you're doing, how you're living. It's against the law. Nothing's against anything until you're caught. And if you're caught, what then? I don't intend to be, but if I am, well, I'll cry tomorrow. Jill, please listen to me. Kim, will you cut out the girly girly talk? You're getting too old for it. Jill, I don't want to lose you again. You don't have to if you act your age. You can stay here with me. But under my conditions. Jill, you're my sister. You're the last thing that I have in the world. Look, if you won't do it my way, and I won't, then I'd like to stay here with you. Kim. But under my conditions. What's that? Well, that I could be a part of whatever you're doing. Well, I couldn't learn the angles as fast as you, but I could catch on. Do you mean that from the level? I'd like a cigarette. Since when did you start smoking? Since right now. Oh, Kim. It's going to be like old times, but only better. Pop won't be around. What do I do first? First, we get jobs. Jobs? You mean we work at jobs? Oh, well, it's only for four weeks. You know, during the Christmas rush at the post office. Oh, Kim. <laughs> Name's Jill Atlas? Yes, ma'am. Is this your correct address? Yes, ma'am. You didn't put in a social security number. Well, I haven't got one, ma'am. I've never worked before. Uh, none of us have. You see, we're from the Valley School, and, and we thought if we could get a job here at the Valley Station, well, that way we'd be close to home and we could save on bus fare. Well, that makes sense, the way things cost now. Yes, the more we save, the more we'll have for Christmas. We'll take any kind of job inside.
them out until they're as good as you are. I sure will, Mr. Rick. And get them some tin hats like yours. I'll get them the whole outfit when they've earned it. Okay, Joe, let's go. All right, Pete, start moving in. Go ahead, Benny. the door and go down the steps and jump on the box I've already put there and shoot the foam into the alarm. Time? I've done it every day for three weeks and four minutes. It always take you four minutes? Sometimes four ten, sometimes three fifty, depending on where the special guard is. But it usually averages out at four. Start your motor. Gun it loud. up at 4.35. I'm at the door in five seconds. I make sure that Judy goes to the lobby door and opens it for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, while I'm talking to him. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, while I get the packet, get out back on the street. Okay, it's assimilated 11 minutes. I better cut that down to 10. I'm giving myself too much leeway. Blow the horn. Relax, sis. Tomorrow's the last day. Well, I just hope I don't faint or something. What's it a faint about? We've been over it a thousand times. Well, I know. If any of the women panic, just grab one of them so that they don't do anything silly. What's so difficult about that? Judy isn't worried. She's had more experience than I have. Listen, tomorrow night at this time, we're going to be 20,000 feet in the air. On our way to Hawaii. Hawaii? Well, I was going to wait until after it was all over to surprise you, but since you're so jittery... Why are we going to Hawaii? You don't think we're going to sit around here and be sitting ducks for them, do you? We've got to separate, all of us, until this thing blows over. You've got everything all planned out, haven't you? Everything, and it can't fail. And I suppose we live forever in Hawaii. Nah. On January 15th, you, Rick, Sue, and I meet in Mexico City to split the money. 7000 for me, 1000 for you. And the others? Oh, Rick pays them off tomorrow night and then blows to Miami Beach. His mother lives there. You know, no matter where he is, he always spends Christmas with his mother. That's very thoughtful of him. Yeah, he's crazy about his mother. 
This will be the first Christmas Pop will be alone. Oh, pigs like him will never be alone. They've always got a bottle of beer for a friend. Well, you can always send him a box of Hawaiian candy from Honolulu. Well, come on. Let's go to bed. We've got to be awfully sharp tomorrow. I felt I had to do it. It seemed the only way I could get my sister away from the wrong things she was doing and the criminals she was running with. I know it was an awful thing to do, but I hope she will forgive me in time and understand my reason for wanting to save her. Considering the offense committed by you, and in view of the fact that you are juveniles, this court places you on probation until you reach the age of 21. On condition, however, that you place yourselves in custody and under the control of the state youth authority. Further condition, that you undergo psychiatric treatment for a period to be determined by them. Deputy. Rise. This way. Kim Winters. The federal government thanks you for your help. You're free to go, Miss Winters. Yes, I 
was free. Because when Jerry touched me, I was no longer afraid. 